Hello everyone and welcome to the East Kentucky Science Center celebrates Astronomy Day for October 2021. Really excited to have you join us here for our first ever uh, Facebook video. So keep an eye out on our timeline and on our social media for us doing more of these kinds of videos in the future. And please let us know on any type of social media or email, anything like that, of a video you might like us to, to do for everyone. So for those of you who haven't met me, my name is Krista Gent, and I am the new director here at the East Kentucky Science Center. So for today, for our celebration, I'm just gonna do a quick video introducing myself, showing you a couple things that you can see in the night sky right now from here in the Prestonsburg area, and then talk a little bit about what events you have to look forward to for the rest of the year. So we'll go ahead and start, uh, like I said, with a little bit about me. since. I don't think I've met a lot of you because our Science Center is still closed currently for renovations. We're hoping that it will be opening in early November. So again, keep your eyes out on our social media, on our Facebook and Instagram to see noti uh, notifications of when we're going to open and when we're going to do more events like this. So a little bit about me. I am originally from Maryland. My husband and I moved here about two and a half months ago at this point. We absolutely love it here so far. We are huge into hiking and kayaking and being outside. So everyone also so far that we have met has been amazingly welcoming and friendly. I'm very excited to be here and honored to continue running the, the East Kentucky Science Center. I do have degrees in education and astronomy and earth science as well. I have taught high school science. I've taught on a mobile science laboratory that's driven around to high school students and I also have worked in a planetarium. So have about, you know, since 2010, I've been working with planetariums and I am so, so happy to be here in Prestonsburg, continuing to make the Science Center as awesome as I know it has been. All right, so like I mentioned, there are actually plenty of things that you can see in the night sky right now. It's actually a great time for Astronomy Day to be happening. There are three planets that you'll be able to see right after sunset. And of course, lots of stars that has been one of the most amazing parts about moving down here to the south is all of the stars that I can see in the night sky. So I'm actually gonna show you a couple of our features here using this website. It is called Stellarium, and I actually have our location set near Food City. I just noticed that, that's pretty fun. So I have our location set for right here in Prestonsburg. You can actually access this software yourself and do some star searching. Um, you can change the locations. You can go to different parts of the world. You can look for different objects here. So I really recommend this uh, Stellarium website. So I have the sky set for right now. And pretty much the only thing that you can see during the daytime is our sun. It is the closest star to Earth. And because of that, it pretty much blocks out everything else in the sky. So we do have to wait. I'm going to fast forward us here to the sun beginning to set over there in the west. Now, if you have a nice view of the horizon where the sky meets the ground, you'll start to see a super nice bright dot, which is the planet Venus. That's going to be over there in the west. Venus is the brightest planet in the solar system. It's right next to us, uh, one of the one of our uh, planetary neighbors, and it's covered in super reflective shiny clouds, which makes Venus also the hottest planet in the solar system. So that makes it nice and bright, but you only have about an hour or so to find Venus in the western sky after sunset. If you don't get a chance to see that though, do not worry, because if you turn a little to your left and look at the southern sky, you will see two other nice bright planets. It's actually all of them kind of lining up there with our moon right in the middle. So it's a pretty cool sight to see those three planets and the moon all in that line, going from the south to the southwest sky. So these other two bright planets are huge, biggest planet in the solar system, Jupiter, and the ringed planet Saturn. So we can actually take a quick little view. We'll zoom in here and you can get a nice view of the largest planet. It can fit over a thousand Earths inside of Jupiter here. It is so big, which is one of the reasons that it's nice and bright in our sky. And again, this is a planet covered in reflective shiny clouds. So much in fact that we call Jupiter a gas giant because it's really big and it's mostly made of gas. 
We actually don't even know for sure what's underneath the clouds in the atmosphere of Jupiter because that atmosphere uh, is so deep. Now Saturn is a bit farther away, it's also a bit smaller, so it's not quite as bright as Jupiter in the sky, but it's just going to be to the right, still fairly nice and bright, and uh, a lot of people when you hear of Saturn, you might have done this yourself, you think of those beautiful rings. So Jupiter actually has rings too, they're just much, much harder to see, uh, and that's because Saturn's rings are made of little pieces of ice, and ice is super shiny when light hits it. The rings of Saturn are also much wider, so that makes them easier to see, and it took us a long time to find out that Jupiter and Uranus and Neptune too all have rings, but they're very hard to see. They're thin, made of dust, much harder. So I just wanted to do a quick little tour of the uh, three actually planets. You can see Venus right after sunset in the west, and then Jupiter and Saturn will be up for much longer in the southern sky. You'll have, you know, most of the evening to spot uh, those two planets in the sky. Now, of course, there are lots of other stars too. So some things that you can actually try to see if you can spot and let us know on our social media. Try to take a picture, let us know if you find them. The Big Dipper is one of the most recognizable shapes in the sky. I'll actually go back here real quick and see if we can spot it. I'm actually gonna put up um, the outlines and the art of our constellations. So there's actually 88 total constellations in the nighttime sky, and they all have a different story behind them. So I'm kind of backed up here to let you kind of take a look around. There's a lot of uh, different animals in that sky, a lot of different shapes. You do have to use your imagination uh, for, for quite a few of them, because as the sun is setting, you'll start to see Ursa Major, which is also known as the Great Bear, and the tail and back of which make up that shape of the Big Dipper, which is uh, really called an asterism, but it's the easiest part of Ursa Major, that constellation, to see. So the Big Dipper will be over there in the north, pretty low to the sky, and the Little Dipper right up above it, the tail of which is our North Star. And that helps you find the direction of, of North. So lots of different things that you can see in the sky, but I also want to let you know what to look at for the rest of the, the year. So we've got a couple things. We have meteor showers happening uh, basically every month for the rest of the year. Keep in mind that some of these are going to be hard to see. Right? The meteors may be uh, very happening, you know, not super often. You might have one or so an hour. Uh, for, for one of them, the moon is going to be nice and bright, so it'll be very hard to see these meteor showers, but still wanted to let you know. And anytime you see the name of a meteor shower, it's usually named after the constellation in the sky that it looks like the meteors are coming from. So we've got the Taurids in October 10th, which is actually, it just happened. Um, that's coming from the constellation Taurus, or it looks like it is. The Orionids are happening. They look like they come from the constellation of Orion the Hunter. So those are gonna be a couple meteor showers that we see in the month of October. Uh, coming up actually very soon, so coming up very soon, October 16th, there's going to be the launch of a mission called the Lucy mission, named after one of the first uh, human-like fossils that have been found. So this mission is actually going to go to Jupiter, that planet that we pointed out earlier. It's going to study something called Trojan asteroids, which are asteroids that are kind of in front of and behind Jupiter as Jupiter orbits around the sun. No mission has ever gone to study these types of asteroids before, so it's gonna to try to help us learn about what they're made of, are they different from the rest of the asteroids in the solar system? That's gonna be really exciting to learn about. Uh, October 24th is also the best time this year to look for the planet Mercury because it's between the Earth and the Sun in our solar system, just like Venus. Mercury and Venus are always gonna be close to the Sun in our sky. October 24th is gonna be the point of time where Mercury is kind of the furthest away from the sun it'll get, which means it's the easiest time um, to, to spot it. So next month in November, we've got a few more meteor showers. There's also gonna be a partial lunar eclipse. The thing is though, eclipses don't like to be super convenient all the time. So this lunar eclipse is gonna be at its maximum phase at 4.02. AM. So if you like to get up nice and early and you look outside November 19th, you will be able to spot the moon in its partial eclipse. 
There's also going, to be, uh, also going to be another mission launching that's November 24th. This is called the DART mission or the Double Asteroid Redirection Test. This one's really exciting because this is actually going to be a test for how to protect Earth from any asteroids that might be coming towards us. So you may have heard about the uh, infamous asteroid that uh, kind of wiped out all the dinosaurs. One of the biggest questions is, what if that happened again? What would we do? So the DART mission here is gonna actually test out a way to have a tiny little robot crash onto the surface of an asteroid and try to push it in another direction. This is the first time we're ever testing something like this. So it's kind of like an earth saving mission. So we're gonna test that out starting in November. And then for the last part of the month, there are of course two more meteor showers. There is a total solar eclipse but you have to go to Antarctica to see this one. So if you like to travel all the way down to the southern part of the Earth, you'll be able to see that total solar eclipse. Uh, but don't worry if you don't wanna do that. I understand there is gonna be a total solar eclipse in 2024 that's gonna be much closer to this area. And then there's also gonna be a uh, telescope launch. I'm super, super excited for this one. This James Webb Space Telescope, we have been waiting for decades for this telescope to launch. It's going to help us look farther than ever before. It's gonna take pictures of super far away galaxies in deep space and help us learn about planets that are outside of our solar system. Farther even than the Hubble telescope is able to look. So that's hopefully gonna be launching December 18th. And in January, the East Kentucky Science Center is gonna do an event to learn all about this telescope mission. So keep an eye out for that as well. All right, so thank you so much for joining us for our first Facebook video and our celebration of Astronomy Day. Don't forget to follow us on our Facebook and our Instagram. Let us know what you see in the sky and if you have any questions that you wanna talk about for our future videos. So thanks so much, everyone.